Hello, my name's Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be talking about It's Your Choice from Paul Brook. Before we do this, I'd like to like and subscribe. Check out onlinemagic.co. That is, of course, my membership site that's been going for 10 years, live sessions every week when I'm not doing gigs and stuff like that, and they are also uploaded. So even if you can't make the live sessions, you can ask questions, I can take them into the live sessions for discussion, and they're uploaded. So there is no better way to learn than listening to people of varying abilities, discussing magic tricks and the stuff they're working on. Uh, and there's a whole, well, half of the book, The Royal Road to Card Magic is on there in one course. I'm gonna do the rest of it very soon. Coin Magic, Rope Magic, you know the drill. Go and have a look, onlinemagic.co. And like and subscribe, please. So I, most of my book reviews, I say things like, oh, I got these ages ago and they were on my shelf for ages and this is no different. It's just so hard for me to get to, to really delve into books and focus on them enough to be able to review them. Now, I am usually very careful to read every single word of a book, but some books I just don't need to. I've read three quarters of this. The reason I've got both of these books around uh, out is that Paul has also sent me Certified Mentalism, which I have read a lot of, but was so long ago, I can't review it now because I forgot, but it's just brilliant. Uh, and I hadn't known a lot about Paul's work before that. I'm going to try not to go through everything in it because I don't think you need that. Again, I get this habit of thinking I've got to mention every single trick and kind of easy with this one because it's all based around one trick. Well, it's not really a trick. It's a utility device. Is that the right word? Anyway, a concept. And I didn't realise that because I didn't look at it for ages. And when I looked at it, I thought, this is the weirdest thing. Okay, and I'll explain why in a minute. This is based on a trick I saw in Banachek's Psy series, part one, many, many years ago called This and That. And I remember making this up, the trick very briefly, and I have a Google of it, but it's very briefly, I'll try and explain it. You have four business cards. The word mind is written out with one letter on each business card, M-I-N-D. And you say to the people in front of you, right, I want you to choose one of these. Now you could choose M, uh, and I could have predicted that because the sort of people that choose M are this. Um, you could choose the I, N or D, but choose anyone. And they choose it, you put it on their hand, you show the other side of the cards and all the cards say this card, they show their card and it says that card. And then you finish off, you were gonna choose that card. And I knew all along and you've done this kind of reading loads of different ways of doing that. I really liked the purity of this trick when I, and I remember making it up and my business cards had loads of stuff and I haven't got blank business cards. And I did it a few times and I thought, well, it's not really playing okay, I won't bother doing it. And I kind of left it alone. Then years later, I read this and, and Paul has said exactly the same thing. He went through exactly the same process. He did the trick, he did it for friends, he got really good response, took responses, took it out to a gig or gigs and he couldn't quite make it work. This is where our paths di diverged. No, that's the opposite, isn't it? Diverted, I suppose, went different ways. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is where we've done different things. That's what I'll say. I sort of gave up on it and Paul stayed with it. And as he says in this book, some tricks, even though they don't work, they just stay with you. You can't put them down. So he couldn't get it out of his head. A bit like I have with the, the Conan ball and things that I couldn't quite get to work and just never went away and started geeking out on it, basically. He changed different things, he, he, he slimlined it, he, he eradicated movement in different ways, and he started making it work. And I really enjoy the first bit of this book is about that process, what that process was for him. Now, he writes this as someone that knows what the learner needs to be able to learn or, or be inspired. And straight away, I found this really readable. I didn't have the cards in hand. He talks you through how to do the original trick in the appendix, but he also talks through how to set the concept up uh, with cards in hand. He says, you know, make sure you get the cards in your hand when you do this. But even without them, I really, really understood it and felt like I could then go off and get the cards, which I then did and played with it. Then what he does is go into lots of different, well, he goes into the first few different things he tried, which worked, and then you can see, of course, that would work better. And then he, it opened up this whole idea for him. And then he went, actually, what if I did that? And then you get this, what is now the book, 
a lot of, well, on the face of it, seem to be lots of different ways to do this trick, but it's a bit more than that. So you've got this concept and you think, right, all right, I could change the word, I can change this and, and that's fine. And then you go, actually, no, it, it, it says it doesn't have to be a word, it can be something else. And you get these tricks, for want of a better word, routines that are not only different ways of doing the same thing, but also have very different feels to them. You can imagine them working in very different contexts and they feel like... Each trick doesn't feel like a different version of the same trick. And there's books that are full of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're great. They're great ways to learn a concept. But they feel like completely different things, if you see what I mean. So for one, one example, I'm not going to give all of them away, because I think it's important not to. But one example is he has, OK, you've got four people on these cards, and, and one of them goes to the gym and loves it, and one doesn't love it. Or one goes to the gym and, and says they go to the gym, and, and three people are faking it, or whatever. And it becomes something with context. Now you might look at that and go, well, why would I do that? But if you were doing a certain trade show or if you were doing a certain event or with certain people or certain friends, what you realize very quickly is you can start tailoring this trick to those people. He also adds another layer on it, which are these convincers. I think he's called hidden persuaders. Yeah, hidden persuaders, which Banachek had this thing with M-I-N-D. I know what one you're going to choose and, and then they choose it. He does the routine and then says, I know you were going to choose that because that's the only one. And he, he, there's all this kind of pseudo explanation stuff that he has built into it, which again, on the face of it seems like just a nice little touch, but actually could become the main effect and could become the thing that makes those people think he, he's really thought about this. And that's where this is really going. This, this book It's actually, by the time you've read half of it, you go, there is so much you could do with this, which isn't just, I knew you were going to choose that one because of this. It's why would you choose that one? Why would you choose it? And you, you create this whole psychological thing around it. And some of them are fun, some of them are serious. There's this lovely, bizarre magic trick in there, which is quite dark, which is, is about kind of uh, murderers and victims and things like that. Again, there's so much more to this. So I don't think you can just, it's not just about a word. It's about the presentation around it. Now on that, he gives you obviously how to do the trick, how to set it up and make it. Very little to be done here. If you've got blank business cards or you've got business cards with blank sides, you're not, there's not loads of arts and crafts in this. And it's something you're going to be able to bang together very quickly. Even if you turn up and go, it's that business. I can, I can do this, but he, or I can tailor it to this. So he takes you through how to do it. He takes you through the explanation and importantly, the scripting and tells you why he said certain things. And this is where he says, he rewards study. When you read through this book, it's very tempting to go, oh yeah, even look at the pictures, go, oh yeah, I'll get that. But then when you read it, he's got these nuggets of information that make you go, if I hadn't read that, I wouldn't know that. And that wouldn't have set me off in this other thought process and given me this idea. So there's a lot of why in this book. And I say this a lot. Books with why in are really important to me. I don't just want to read a book of instruction anymore. I want to go, why has this person done this? And it's important if someone actually goes out and performs it. Now, I know without a shadow of a doubt, Paul does go out and perform this because he's telling the stories of him performing it. When he, in the first sort of half of it is, is, is all the different routines. I'll give it, a, you know, I'll give you a very sort of quick sort of flip through. This is the, the setup at the beginning. Um, not, don't want to shoot, but you know, these lovely illustrations. And that's, that's, you know, that's all I'm going to show you without you pausing it and being able to read it, because I think every word in this is probably very important. The second kind of half-ish, well, you know, is the bit that makes it the special edition. So this is one of 200 um, which are signed. Um, let's see, it says here, this is 122. Uh, limited edition, 122 signed by Paul himself, and everything you get is that. Now... So it's genuinely a limited edition. But when I was reading the first half of this, I thought, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's an expensive book. A lot of mentalism books are very niche, especially when they're limited edition. So it is an expensive book. I'm not going to say the price because every time I say it, it changes or there's an offer on or anything like that. But have a Google, have a look through. But, you know, expect to be paying for this. You know, it is an investment. But I think if you're going to be doing that sort of thing, it's a really good one. Going back to my point being that when you start getting to the second half of this, I go, right, now I understand why this is as much as it is, because it's not just here's a trick, here's a load of versions, is, okay, here's a bit on trade shows. Well, what you want to do when you're on a trade show stand is this, and I've worked trade shows, and I know what to do on trade show stands, and I know what my job is. 
But even reading this, I learned a couple of things and went, of course, and he has a version of this that isn't really a mentalism trick. It's used for a totally different thing. And I know that if you do this for certain people at trade shows, they're going to think, you've put so much work into this. You've created this way of getting people onto my stand in a really genuine way to almost to kind of pre-qualify them. And, you know, that is, it's almost like a little mini masterclass in trade shows. Even if, with a couple of pages, I go, right, that's why this isn't, you know, a, a low price book. Same with weddings. You know, he's got, you can use this in weddings and it's not in the normal way. He links each version of this to what will be going on at a wedding. So talking about the, there's a sobriety test which is very funny there's the best speech and it's it's the result of a lot of thought and again when you do this at a wedding when you do this at a trade show when you look at all these things you go these people are going to think i've created magic for them which you kind of have but he's held your hand through it the final bit well the nearly final bit is the he talks you through how to customize it so rather than you just going oh, i can think of my own thing and and sort of feeling your way through that he holds your by the hand and he takes you through the different stages of creating a bespoke version of this so um so you know you start step one choose a theme step two choose the category he talks you through this so by the end of this you're going to have your own version of this trick which you've invented based on this concept and that's why he calls it a utility thing because once you know this your brain is going to fire and you're going to i think be able to walk into a gig and go i could do it with that or who are those three people i could even write those three people's um, names on the front and do a little thing with them and do it that way, you know, to, for the um, the hidden convincers. So that's not going to make much sense, sorry, but I'm not going to go back and explain it. <laughs> You'll get what I mean if you get the book. I think this is great. This is clearly the result of an awful lot of thought. It is not, I'm going to find a load of ways to do this trick. Each one feels different. Each one feels like it suits a different theme, a context, as a different feel. And I think by the end of reading this book, you're going to have something that without a doubt you'll use. And it won't just be that thing that I found of, yeah, it kind of works, but it doesn't really go anywhere. This makes sure it does go somewhere. And, you know, you've got the, the, the thoughts of an expert here. And that's obviously why you're, you're paying the money. Of course, it's not going to be for everybody. Now, people say to me, you know, you've got to say why it isn't going to be for everybody. It's not. If you don't know, like that, initial routine or you're not a mentalist or you're not working trade shows and I don't think you have to be or you're not doing gigs it might not be for you it, it's if you're interested in that sort of thing yes but you, you know that routine itself may not fit but I'd be very surprised if anybody that's into this sort of stuff gets to the end of that and goes yeah it's uh I thought it was great I'm looking forward to getting into the next stuff and it's been a real pleasure to read so any questions, of, of course, I will answer any other questions about it on the live sessions um, Thursdays, most Thursdays at five. That's why I make sure you press the little bell icon. So if I can't go live on a Thursday, uh, you know I'm not going to. And that does happen quite often when I'm busy at the moment. But if you ask a question, it will probably be answered on a Thursday. And I'm starting to do more giveaways on Thursday. So do come along live five UK time just to, you know, I, talk, I answer all the comments and we have a chat and it's a good laugh. So... Uh, that'd be great and tell people about it if you could tell one other person that you know about this channel that would really help me you know you don't have to put it all over social media if you want to great but or you could tag someone and just say look you know steve channels uh, i like it you might too and so many people have said i'm so glad you found your channel i can't believe it's been going like three years and i've just found it so that'd be great if you know someone that likes someone that rambles a lot and uh and talks about his passion Right, have a good one everybody. Now please go and have a look at onlinemagic.co and also please use the links below. Take care, see you later, bye bye.